Hey guys, Kirk with Premier Chiropractic. Uh, today I'm gonna go over something we get a lot of questions about, and that's arthritis. So we're gonna cover osteoarthritis. Osteo just means bone. There's a lot of different arthritis. There's rheumatoid arthritis. Um, there is some other like septic arthritis. There's a couple of different ones. We're gonna stick to osteoarthritis just because that's the one we just see a lot in clinic and we have a lot of questions about that. So. Um, before we go into kind of the, the pathophysiology or the, the mechanism of how that happens, we're just going to go over a quick little uh, kind of anatomy of what we would see in a joint. So if we looked at, uh, this would be kind of an example of a knee joint. We have bone, bone, and just so you know, like the periosteum is kind of the outer layer of the bone that does have pain receptors. So that does become a little bit important with osteoarthritis. When we get to the joint level, we do have articular cartilage on both sides of that joint. So the articular cartilage is kind of a, a cushiony cartilage, um, and then it's gonna secrete some things as well. So it's important that we maintain the articular cartilage in all of our joints. Again, this is just a knee example. If we looked at kind of the going out from there, we have the synovial membrane here. And then we have a fibrous capsule around that. And then those two together, the synovial membrane and the fibrous capsule make up what we call the articular capsule. Um, the synovial membrane secretes synovial fluid. So this would have synovial fluid. In the joint capsule. Okay, and then after that, you have ligaments and muscles and all those types of things. But we're going to kind of keep it in this context here. Um, okay, so the interesting thing about joints is, number one, they don't get a lot of blood flow. Just in general, if you were to compare a muscle to a joint, the muscle is going to get tons of blood flow. Um, a joint typically is not. A joint is going to get a lot of its nutrients through a pumping mechanism of movement, which we will come back to um, in a different video when we go over kind of the, the treatment methods for um, osteoarthritis. So if we were to look at kind of what happens um, with, uh, with osteoarthritis, there's a few things that can be kind of preceding factors to this. One would be trauma. So that usually is only about like 12 to 15% of osteoarthritic, case, osteoarthritic cases is past trauma. Um, the big, big thing we, we see is osteoarthritis is actually a low-grade uh, chronic inflammatory condition most of the time, okay? So what happens is kind of in this area of the synovial membrane and the capsule, you get macrophages, and then those macrophages, so let's take kind of maybe a macrophage in here, that's going to produce through... Um, again, it can be trauma, it can be like excess movement at a joint or not enough movement at a joint, um, or just kind of diet induced or lack of sleep, you know, lifestyle factors can promote inflammation. And then that inflammation, um, those inflammatory mediators will get transferred um, from out here inside of the, the synovial fluid inside the capsule there. Okay, so. What are some of those inflammatory mediators? You're gonna get like interleukin-1, B, interleukin-6, interleukin-17, um, and TNF-alpha are kind of your main ones for the joint that will promote inflammation in there. And then that will lead to proteases being uh, produced. And proteases will signal actually cartilage kind of destruction. It will, it will start to where at this articular cartilage here, so it would be a little kind of different on there. And then as we get to the bone, one common thing we see with the bone is subchondral sclerosis. So this part, which is the subchondral bone, we would see sclerotic bone in there and we would see a bit of an increase in that bone. Why is that? Well, we have different types of cells in the bone that are called the ones that uh, we're going to focus on here are osteoblasts, meaning bone building cells. Those are also stimulated from, you know, number one, it can be stimulated from the lack of uh, kind of cartilage. So the cartilage starts to break down. 
then your body starts saying, well, we need some type of stability. So then it starts to produce that, but it's also those inflammatory markers that can stimulate the osteoblasts to start to make what we call osteophytes. And then that, uh, those osteophytes are basically just kind of bridging of bone and new building of bone in certain areas of the joint. So um, we would also have some obviously joint space narrowing, which is a very, very common thing we see uh, clinically with osteoarthritis. So sometimes we get the question like, how do you know if you have it? I mean, you're gonna have joint pain, obviously. You can have some joint crepitus or clicking and popping, but really the best way to see it is through some type of imaging. Um, <clears throat> now, it's such a common condition. Sometimes I think we can, us as clinicians, we just see it so often that we can kind of say, you know, it, it's common, nothing to worry about, but really there's some things we can do treatment-wise to help that joint as best we can or if you are, if you don't have osteoarthritis and you want to prevent it, there's definitely some things we can do from a prevention perspective to make sure that we're not going to wind up with, with a lot of our joints like this. Um, so we'll go through that in the next video.